Professors is brought to you by Trollentoad.com, MTGMintCard.com, CardHoto.com, and Jiffy's Photo and Baseball Cards. Shards of Alara is here and known, and it looks extremely tasty, so have your mouse on the order button at Trollentoad.com, MTGMintCard.com, and CardHoto.com, or support the show and head on down to Jiffy's Photo and Baseball Cards today. Welcome back to yet another episode of Plane Talk with the Professors. This week, the explosion of tournament talk begins, and with the sealed PTQ season now upon us, you should be prepared. So we're going to take a look at a Shards of Alara sealed deck this week, as well as dive into the Reflecting Pool standard metagame and what Wizards has ingeniously done to alter this format. So let's draw. So the Shards of Alara PTQs are here and known, and everybody from deck builders to Evan Irwin to a dozen different article junkies want you to know how to build your sealed pools. And while reading these articles are effective and assist you, know this. A. There is no substitute for practice. And B. You need gimmicks and instruction to practice. So, while our society isn't quite at the point where I can walk out of a fan's computer and into their inner depths of their house, not that we at Planeswalker and the professors would want to do such a thing. What I meant to say was, we're not quite at the point where we can locate your house, walk over there with a couple of magic cards, if you know what I'm saying. No, wait. Well, what I mean to say is that technology isn't quite at the point where someone you know only over the internet is able to walk into your bedroom with unknown items at approximately 9 o'clock at night. Anyway, Shards of Alara sealed. Right. So here are some obvious tips. A. Play as much removal as possible. This one's a pretty obvious key that has applied to every sealed format ever. However, in normal sealed formats, where you see the most removal in destruction black, burn red, and countering blue, you instead see black, red, and white in Shards of Alara, with the important splash of a couple of counters in blue, and cards such as Branching Bolt splashing in green. However, focusing on black, red, and white, a few favorites of mine include Oblivion Ring, Excommunicate, Scour Glass, Bone Splinters, Executioner's Capsule, Infest, Blood Pyre Elemental, and Soul's Fire. Cards such as Oblivion Ring, Bone Splinters, Executioner's Capsule, and Blood Pyre Elemental are particularly effective against huge bombs like the 8-drop cycle. Cards such as Infest and Scour Glass are fantastic board clears that can corrupt the flow of the game easily. And of course, Soul's Fire and Excommunicate, which, while great game enders, will screw you over if used too soon. For this sake, if the removal is available and it coordinates with your bombs, I suggest you play a shard with two of those three colors. Which brings the best shards to play when, of course, you have everything else to back it up. Esper, Grixis, Yund, and Naya. Of course, with the counters and crazy exalted creatures, that's not to eliminate eliminate Bant, specifically with all its bombs. This also does not eliminate any 4 or 5 color monstrosity either, which reminds me that, of course, as in any other format, you're going to need your bombs, which brings us to B. Play your bombs and the mana fixing that supports it whenever possible. Particularly in Shards of Alara, you'll need the mana fixing and acceleration. And with creatures with power 5 or greater being such a dominant strategy, I might suggest not only using the Obelisks, Panoramas, Shardlands, and Druid of Anima, but also specific cards that assist in the later games such as Sunseed Nurture and Exuberant Firestoker. Sunseed Nurture can keep you alive in the later game, while Exuberant Firestoker can get the job done quickly. An additional suggestion that is particularly true in Shards of Alara is C. Play mid-range and low-range cards that keep you alive, stave off attacks, or stop a stalemate. Cards such as Vectus Silencers, Knight of the Skyward Eye, Marble Chalice, Onyx Goblet, Naya Battle Mage, Hissing Iguanar, Feral Hydra, Scavenger Drake, Algae Gariel, and Rock Slide Elemental are great examples. Cards such as Vectus Silencers and Knight of the Skyward Eye create slightly more limited deck building, but are quite splashable for either their abilities or the card you have to cast itself. Vectus Silencer allows you to lurk in the shadows until your opponent comes in with a Woolly Thoktar or 7-7 seven, seven Thunder Thrash Elder, while Knight of the Skyward Eye lets you get a big jump with a turn 4-5-5 five, five, ready to combat most big creatures that can't be dealt with via burn. Marble Chalice, Onyx Goblet, and Feral Hydra, on the other hand, 
and are riskier choices because you have to give a little more time for them to kick into effect. But the Chalice and Goblet allow you to gain a big life difference, while Feral Hydra causes all sorts of fun in an epic stalemate. Naya Battle Mage and Hissing Iguanar, likewise, work much the same way, but can be used a bit more useful when your opponent has a bomb that they've dropped all their eggs into, or in the case of a never-ending game. Ending this note with a Yun cycle, the pumpers can lead to some pretty mad beats. And while Algae Gariel and Scavenger Drake usually end up being slightly more useful because of their evasion, whether it be to creatures or spells, Rock Slide Elemental is always nice for the fact that you can access it one turn earlier, and as such, it acts much better in combat situations. And now, with all these tricks and plenty more that may only be learned from experience, let's go to the Shard of Alara sealed deck. So it took three minutes of sorting, that's not my best time, but that's okay. Now we're going to separate into uh, generally playable cards and generally not playable cards. We have a lot of playables in white. Tezzeret, sideboard at the moment, we'll have to see. Same thing with a lot of the artifact based stuff. We're at uh, Leviathan, the fact that it's uh, eight mana. Um, we're going to put in the sideboard for right now. Battle Mage, Scavenger Drake, Tarfiend, we're going to say... Sideboard of the moment. Wow, two lightning talents. Uh, the first strike. That's impressive. Dragon fodder. We're gonna say yes. You ridge ran it just because you need to have big guys. Druid of Anima. We're gonna say yes. Gift of the Gargantuan is uh, great for uh, switching out your bombs. Uh, the obelisks in general, I find, are very strong in uh, limited, just for the sake of acceleration and not so much mana fixing. But uh, particularly sealed, not so much draft. So uh, same thing with the uh, these lands. They're definitely gonna be playable. And uh, yeah, just about everything there is gonna be playable. Agony Warp. Steward. Rip Clan. Def Gijian. We got we got a lot of decent two drops here. I guess that it's all right. I think it'll be okay now uh, let's check the total mana cost. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in white. One. Two, three, four, five in blue. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in red. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in green. Four green, four red, five white, four blue. Wizards of the Coast has just accomplished something amazing. True, almost every successful deck in the next few months will have 4x reflecting pools, but you've been warned, and of course, they're not as expensive as, dare I say it, Termogoyf, especially being a previously printed, even though old, card. Anyway, by introducing such cards that were cheap enough to counteract fairies and a number of fast decks such as Esper Charm, they've allowed for a slower format. Well, duh, you say, but what you may not have realized is that by allowing this slower format, they've allowed some truly amazing decks to shine. This is because cheap cards that have long-term effects have time to do their thing, which is a lot more fun than having your opponent say, play Cryptic Command and totally screw up your tempo. And it has also allowed some of the big and huge guys to get a chance to shine. While it's true that cards such as Esper Charm for the sake of card draw, discard, or killing Bitter Blossom, and Bant Charm for the sake of understacking a figure of destiny or countering a Cryptic Command require to be playing a four or five color monstrosity, isn't this a good thing? While the deck isn't cheap, the only importantly expensive things are the reflecting pools. And if you haven't heard it before, hear it now buy these cards. But really, the deck is great for a variety of reasons, like, the deck is a mishmash deck. What I mean by this is that it allows a player to play just about anything they want, in any quantity they want. And when they do, because of this slower format, the cards can still manage to be effective singularly for their diversity or incredible abilities because of their multicolor madness. The deck has lands that are, while a bit more difficult to acquire, require more thinking and strategic planning prior to play. Yes, yes, I know that filter lands are rare as well, vivids are only meager uncommon. However, because you only require about 12 filter lands for a 5 color deck, and there are a total of 10 filter lands in standard, this gives more value to this thing called a 
booster pack that many spikes may have forgotten of. And yes, it also means that there will be more to go around in non-booster pack related traits. In addition, five color decks have the ability to use all commons and uncommons, and do as such. However, this isn't to say that the metagame is dominated by these decks. In fact, it is wide open still. These decks are slow. I've had a great deal of fun with tribe decks, shard decks, and everything in between. My current build uses, yes, three reflecting pool, but it also uses only two titanic ultimatum, four kitchen finks, three bogart ram gang, and three shriek maw, and no filter lands? Rack your brains on that one. So until next time, this is the card professor tapped out for now and racking your brains, but we'll be back soon.